This podcast provides general information about the law, not specific legal advice. The licensed attorney speaking on this podcast cannot take the place of a competent private attorney who can provide proper legal advice only after hearing the specific facts of your case. You're listening to Law and Caution, Protection Through Legal Education, brought to you by Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. Hello, my name is Josh Lozano. I'm a law student at William S. Boyd School of Law. I'm here today with two attorneys from the Consumer Rights Project at the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. First, I'd like to introduce Ryan McConnell. He's a staff attorney currently focusing on landlord-tenant issues, and he enjoys watching some Aces basketball. How you doing, Ryan? Hey, Josh. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, no problem. And today, we have Angel Getzoff. He is a consumer rights attorney, and he is a company man and a family man first. How are you both doing? Good morning, Josh. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Today, we're going to be discussing uh, credit repair uh, and debt relief scams, traps and signs to avoid. First, what we'll do is we're going to discuss what actually is a credit report and what is the credit dispute process. And then after that, we will focus on the actual what the different scams look like. Just like in every episode, uh, in the description of the episode, you will find links for all the resources we mentioned, such as signups for the free class on bankruptcy and collection proof held right here at the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. You'll also find timestamps so you can jump ahead to the topic that you were looking for. All right, so we're starting with credit report itself. If, Angel, you wanted to start. Yes, thank you, Josh. Yeah, I'd like, I wanted to just get into very quickly what a credit report is and your file, credit files, credit summary, and then go into the dispute process because then we can get into these uh, uh, fraudulent activities and scams. Mm-hmm. And so, what, what a credit report is just a summary of your credit activity, right? And your credit score is a representation of that report, and it's your ability to, I suppose, pay debt and acquire debt. And the obligation of the credit reporting agencies is that all this information is complete and accurate. Mm-hmm. And so getting into this dispute process, what the process actually does is you review your credit file or credit report and then if something is not either complete or accurate you get to dispute it and there can be three possible results the information gets modified the information stays the same and uh, the information gets uh, deleted from your credit file credit report once you dispute once you submit a dispute letter the credit reporting agency is obligated to do an investigation. Okay, you get the results of that investigation, and if you're not happy with the results, you can add um, kind of a statement to be added to your file and report. This goes into what the credit repair organizations do for you, and what can they do? They cannot do anything that you can do yourself, okay? Generally, what they do is they can obtain your credit file, which is more than your credit report. Um, They can send a dispute letter and then they can send a brief summary if, let's say, that investigation is not uh, to your liking. They can send that brief summary explaining why the information is not accurate. And And just um, to to make it simple for the audience then. So... Basically, uh, what the attorney uh, Angel's trying to say is that uh, your credit report itself and the credit dispute process is immensely simple compared to what sometimes you could see on these ads and what they're claiming that they can do. If you just listen to that first part, uh, it would save you a lot of time and hassle, but we'll also just go into what exactly what these types of scams and debt reliefs look like. Yeah, and Josh, before we move on to that, I'd, I'd like to give mm-hmm. the audience a little, uh, some specifics as to how, how they can do this process that Angel was laying out. Mm-hmm. First of all, it seems like a simple, it seems simple, mm-hmm. but how do you pull your credit report? What's the best way to pull your credit report? There's a lot of scams or um, at least websites that charge for these credit reports. Mm. When you can go to annualcreditreport.com and pull your, your credit report for free. And there's three credit reporting agencies. There's TransUnion, there's Experion, and there's always a third one that I forget. And Equifax, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's three credit reporting agencies, annualcreditreport.com, uh, which 
is connected with the with the U.S. government, actually. So it's the only one that is approved by the U.S. government for how to pull your credit scores. So you want to go there first, and they can send it to you in the in the mail. They can send it to you by email, I believe, and uh, you can get one for free. It, during the pandemic, it was. They were allowing it either weekly or monthly. Before then, it was just yearly annual credit report that you would get for free. So don't be fooled by these other websites that ask you to pay money for your credit report. You don't need to do that. There's also these websites that. What's the most popular one? Uh, credit Karma. Yeah, Credit Karma. You can Ooh. go. You can go online and get your Credit Karma. And the thing about Credit Karma is it 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 may not provide the full picture. So it's free. It's not necessarily a scam, but it's not going to give you your full credit report. So you won't exactly know what's going on. So that's why we recommend going to annualcreditreport.com. Secondly, how do you dispute the process? If you go on any of these credit reporting agencies' websites, they have an online form you can do. Each each one of them, which are really simple. You can also, uh, I believe, they have a phone number that you can call, and then they also give you a mail-in process. So no matter where you are in the technology spectrum, whether you want to do everything online, whether you are more comfortable doing things through the mail or or by phone, they have that process laid out for you. So just like Angel was saying, this isn't anything. They these tools that these、uh, scammers have, or these other companies that say, "Hey, we'll repair your credit." All they're doing is going into these the same process that you could do for free on your own, anyways. That's right. That's I think that's the theme today is going to be anything they can do, you can do,、um, and if they promise you something more, then they're lying. <laughs> that's right. And thank you both for that. It's very informative.、Uh, so credit repair and debt relief scams. They can be as simple as claiming, "Hey, we'll increase your credit score. We'll promote non-existent debt、uh, forgiveness programs," or they'll expunge information on your credit reports.、Uh, they'll falsely claim to negotiate on your behalf, advise you to cease all communications with your creditor、uh, because they'll be handling it. And many times they're not even contacting your creditor. And then now.、Uh, You're not even paying. Credit score or debts can get substantially worse, and there's also auto loan modification scams that falsely promise that they can reduce consumers' monthly car loan or lease payments to help them avoid repossession. So、um, you guys kind of、uh, showed the Wizard of Oz. You, you pierced the veil, which is you know really they they can't do that much, but they're claiming all these things. But sadly, we also still see people signing up for this. I guess let's discuss. If you were gonna use one,、mm-hmm. what to look for? And generally, you use one to save time, right?、Mm-hmm. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can definitely utilize a credit repair organization.、Um, but how do you find the right one? What do you look for?、Mm-hmm. And、uh, just as any business, so we're gonna talk. Just you know, I'm I'm bar and licensed in the state of Nevada, so my advice would be just for. Nevada.、Um, if you are in、uh, outside of the state of Nevada, that you should look into your own separate state laws and maybe、mm-hmm. uh, consult an attorney. But in Nevada, any entity that does business has to be registered with the Secretary of State. So I'd、mm-hmm. start there. Look them up on the Secretary of State website. And then these、uh, credit service organizations, they must be registered with the Division of Mortgage Lending, which is the Department of Business, business and Industry. Uh, registrations are valid for one year, and they have to be renewed annually. So I would look them up on the Division of Mortgage Lenders website. And why do they have to register? And well, because they also have to post a surety bond、mm-hmm. um, in order to register. And what that does is a bond protects consumers, and there is an administrative process where you can,、um, if you've been hurt by one of these organizations, you can, you know, file a lawsuit against、um, against the bond. So I would start there. I would start with the Nevada Secretary of State, the Nevada Division of Mortgage Lending,、um, or you can also go to AmericanFairCreditCouncil.org,、um, which can check if a、um, organ or an organization is legit. And then、uh, all those、uh, links will be posted in the description. But that's great advice, especially for the bonded.、Uh, for those in the audience that might have not. Fully understood what that meant.、Uh, it, it's as if you hired someone to come into your home.、Uh, they messed something up. If they were bonded, then you wouldn't have to worry that they wouldn't be able to pay because、uh, they're backed、uh, by the state of Nevada. 
Uh, so same thing with the credit repair. If they mess it up, at least they're backed by the state of Nevada compared to if it's just uh, some guy running a, a, a thing in his basement. Uh, he's just kind of a wild west. And uh, even if you get a judgment, you're not sure that you'll be able to collect on it. So that's why it is important to make sure they're bonded. Yeah. You know, and, so and you also want to make sure that they're not uh, charging you up front. Mm, right. Yeah. Because that, that's a red flag right there because they're not allowed to charge you up front for, for these for these services. So uh and that's a, just a, in general, a good way to protect yourself too anyways, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't want to pay for something and then nothing gets done and you're out that money. Uh, it, so if a company is saying, oh yeah, we're going to do all of this for you. And maybe you, you check, uh, the, go through the process that angel laid out and there, this company is still saying like, oh, nope, you have to give us 100, $200 mm -hmm. before we're, we're going to do anything. Move on, find another, find another company that's more legitimate than that because they shouldn't be charging you up front. Mm -hmm. That's exactly correct. And in fact, they have to outline everything they're going to do for you in writing. Okay. So there must be a contract before you even pay the money. There must be a contract in writing that where they outline what they're going to do for you and they give you the total amount that you're going to own for those services. Mm -hmm. um, so Ryan is absolutely right. Yeah. And then uh, another thing to watch out is if they contact you first. So if you receive any unsolicited calls or a contact uh, from someone offering to help you eliminate your debt, be extremely cautious uh, because like the attorney said up front, there's really not much that they can do that you couldn't do. Uh, so the fact that they're taking the time to solicit and promise things that they most likely won't be able to uh, fulfill is a big red flag. Um, one thing I, I want to ask about is so what's a popular scam with these credit repairs is that they offer something called credit piggybacking, where they're offering to register the consumers as an additional authorized user on one or several cards held by an unrelated account holder with positive payment histories, a practice known as uh, credit piggybacking. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you two about that. If someone heard an offer like that, what are your guys' thoughts? Well, I, I think if if someone was going to put me on a credit card of someone else that I didn't know, mm -hmm. I'd be really, really nervous. <laughs> yeah, but I, I promise to raise your credit score by at least 80 points in one day if you do this. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those pie in the sky, sky mm -hmm. offers, right? Where it's, like, it's too good to be true. And may, maybe it works for some people. I don't know. But if you're looking weighing the risks versus the benefits, I'm not signing up for any credit card of, uh, of any, anyone mm -hmm. I don't know, regardless, regardless of how it's going to help my credit score. Really, if, if you're thinking about the best ways to improve your credit score, there's really only a few surefire ways. And this goes back to the, the Wizard of Oz reference. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's no magical, powerful man behind the curtain that knows all the tricks. Uh, it's fairly simple. You, if you have legitimate debts, you have to find a way to pay those off and clear those debts. Mm -hmm. That will increase your credit score. If you have debts on your credit report that are not yours or that are incorrect, you need to dispute them in like the process we laid out. Or, mm -hmm. if, or if you, like Angel said, some people like to save time and, and hire, one, hire one of these, these legitimate companies, which is completely fair. That's why a lot of companies exist to save, mm -hmm. save other people time so they don't have to do it themselves. But dispute it, dispute it legitimately, mm -hmm. get it off your credit report. That will help raise your credit score. And then if you are, and then there's other ways to improve your credit, credit score in terms of, uh, taking, taking out small, low interest, surefire loans that you're, you know, you're going to pay back and you have, mm -hmm. you build your own good credit history from there. Piggybacking on someone else's good credit history that you don't know that may or may not have good credit history mm -hmm. is is a very, it's a very risky proposition. I was just gonna, I was just gonna piggyback quote unquote oh. on, on Ryan's statement. It's actually in Nevada, it is illegal for credit repair organizations to even ask you to do that, mm. uh, to advise you to either, let's say, create a new record or history or use a different name, use a different address, use a different social security number. That's, uh, uh, it's not allowed. It's, it's protected under the Deceptive Trade Practices Act which is chapter 598 NRS. So they can't do that. And, and that's a, that's a great point. Besides for all, besides all the risky stuff I just named, yeah. <laughs> laid out, uh, it's, you're essentially committing fraud. 
mm-hmm. if you're doing that. And and that fraud is illegal. So don't do that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to make a bad situation worse. Yeah. Like you're already dealing with the uh, the debt and all the stress that comes with it. You wouldn't want to have fraud charges by listening to uh, your neighbor uh, who runs his credit repair business from the garage. So That's uh, right. Another thing, too, is it's a case called FTC versus Michael and Valerie Rando. Uh, basically, what they were going around is they were recommending... Uh, they ran a business and then that credit repair business was so successful that they started selling classes on how to teach people to create their own credit repair business. And their main thing is that they were uh, telling and advising people to call and request to remove any address or phone number associated. Uh, And if you don't have a new address, use a friend's address uh, to the credit reporting agency as identity theft. So for example, if you, the credit report was related to a house uh, that you lived at, or the credit report was related to some kind of phone number that you were associated, what they would recommend is you just claimed it was identity theft and uh, moved on. And this got so big that, like I said, they were selling classes, uh, teaching people to teach other people this. So uh, just watch out. These these scams can get kind of bazonkers when, you're, when you start researching them. Yeah, I, m- with most of, most of these, it's going to end up these companies are going to be asking you to do some kind of fraud. If, if, if it's not going to be the legitimate process that I, I laid out a couple minutes ago, they're just going to be asking you to do something that your, your little conscience is going to be mm-hmm. telling you, I shouldn't be doing this because it's, it's probably wrong because it, it's not true. That's right. If, in fact, in Nevada, there's statutes that prohibit providing any misleading or untrue statement to the credit repair agencies such as TransUnion, Equifax, um, and uh, Experian. So yeah, so if, and if they're asking you to get involved in fraudulent activity, then they are not a person you'd want to work with and give them money because ultimately you're paying for these services. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to do our The Truth Game Show segment where we ask Angel whether credit card repair companies can or cannot do certain things based on Nevada statute. Are you grappling with complex legal matters and feel overwhelmed? There's hope. At Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada, we are seasoned professionals proficient in diverse fields such as housing, transportation, child custody, domestic abuse, and more. We are an entirely free, comprehensive resource for low-income residents of Southern Nevada seeking legal assistance. Our mission is to increase informed access to the legal system, regardless of income, assets, or citizenship. Visit us at 725 East Charleston Boulevard, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or explore our services and check your eligibility anytime online at L-A-C-S-N dot O-R-G. All right, thank you and uh, welcome back. So we're going to be doing this segment of The Truth a little bit differently. Uh, Stepping up to the uh, batter box himself is going to be Angel and we're going to be asking whether you can or cannot, based on the Nevada NRS 598, uh, Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Let's get started. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. No, the defense is wrong. All right, so can you or can you not charge the consumer for services before full performance of the service? You cannot charge that is based off nrs 598 start with a softball because we already talked about that earlier in the episode can you or can you not make or even advise the consumer to make an untrue or misleading statement to a credit reporting agency you cannot cannot all right can you or can you not guarantee that they will that they will be able to remove information that is adverse to the buyer's ability to obtain credit no, they cannot guarantee you anything. They can't guarantee you results um, or they can't guarantee you, I'm sorry, they can't guarantee that they're able to obtain credit for you based on your credit history or any credit history reporting or rating. Mm, I mean, you are on top of it. There's a lot of cannots. All right, so can you or can you not 
assists or advise the consumer to create a new credit record, history, or rating by using a different name, address, social security number, or other information? So that go back to, you know, making an untrue or misleading statement. It gets more specific and you cannot do that. Can you or can you not submit a dispute to a credit reporting agency without the consumer's knowledge? They cannot do that either. You have to know about it. Can you or can you not call or authorize any person who is not the consumer to call a consumer credit agency and portray themselves as the consumer? Oh, me meaning have somebody... Uh, Ident not, uh, are you suggesting that somebody takes your identity and calls on your behalf? Is that? No, you cannot do that. Correct. <laughs> we have a clean sweep here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Angel is on top of it. Yeah, there's a lot. That's of right. That's yeah, right. That's what we were saying earlier. When we piercing the veil, there's really not that much that they can do that you couldn't do on your own. <laughs> That's exactly right. They cannot do many things. They can only do what you can. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Uh, was Did you want to go into any details about those cannots or anything specifically? Um, no, just like you mentioned, um, everything's outlined in NRS Chapter 598, which is the Nevada Deceptive Trade Practices Act. They have a section. Uh, specifically, it's NRS 598.741 through 598.787, if uh, anybody wants to go and read those. Uh, but yeah, as we mentioned, there's many things they cannot do, and you should look out for those, because any scheme or fraud is going to have one or all of these concepts in there that can't do, like promise you or guarantee or tr uh, try to make you make a misleading statement to these credit reporting agencies. So that's something to um, review and, and watch out for. And then uh, some real solutions, and Orion touched on it, but credit counseling for debt relief, debt settlement, or using the American Fair Credit Council.org to check. Uh, you can also use it to check if the company was real. That's what. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of these debts are, are turned over from the original creditor to some debt collecting company. Mm -hmm. And they, they buy these debts for pennies on the dollar a lot of the time. So they're not necessarily, if you owe $1,000 to name your credit card and uh, this debt collection company comes after you and says, hey, you owe us $1,000 plus interest, they may be willing to accept much less than that $1,000 mm. because they paid much less. Let's say they paid I don't know, $200 for that thousand dollar debt, just because, uh, your credit card company didn't want to have to deal with that anymore. So you may be able to get, a, get away with paying half of what you owe, but you have to call these companies, uh, that are reaching out to you. If you know that you owe the debt, this mm -hmm. isn't the dispute process. This is, yeah, I, I know I had a thousand dollars on my credit card. I couldn't pay it. Now I can maybe pay something. Let's see if I can get this removed from my, from my credit. Try to make a deal that a lot of times they're willing to do so because they, they didn't pay that much for it. And as long as they make a profit, they're good. That's yeah, worth a shot. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you is you end up exactly where you are right now, having to pay that full amount. So uh, just ask and be cordial, be polite. A absolutely. And, and the last thing we, we see a lot of, uh, a lot of clientele coming into our offices with uh, online scams. Mm. Keep a lookout for an online scam just because it's just because they have a website, just because you met someone online and they seemed really they seemed really nice. And all of a sudden, uh, oh, they're trying to sell this to you and they send you to this website and it looks like a perfectly legitimate website. Websites are super easy to create. Mm -hmm. Every, everyone has their, has a website these days. It doesn't make it legitimate. They can put whatever they want on there. That's why following these steps, the uh, America Fair Credit Council, check, making sure these companies are legitimate is really important. Don't just fall for any online scam that, that comes your way. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just like, uh, you know, anything, whenever you need it, is you need it now, right? So mm -hmm. usually when people get involved in repairing their credit is when they need it. Let's say you're applying for a mortgage or uh, trying to get, uh, you know, rental assist, not rental assistance, trying to get into a new apartment or buying a car, you need, you know, better credit now. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to make sure our audience knows is that these process or processes don't uh, happen overnight. You takes a while, right? And so anybody who tells you it's going to happen within the next 20 days, 30 days, right away, 
uh, the, you know, they're, they're not being, um, honest and that's when people get desperate is when they need it. Right. And so they're willing to take a risk and, and utilize a company that may not be legitimate. Um, and, uh, so you just gotta be careful, do your homework, uh, and understand that the process takes time, uh, and don't trust people that say they can do it fast. Mm. And I think, is there anything additionally that you, you two want to add? Uh, I'll just reiterate, mm-hmm. if you haven't pulled your credit report, annualcreditreport.com, mm-hmm. uh, I know it, it sounds like an ad. We should get them to sponsor this podcast <laughs> at, at this point, but yeah. uh, it, it's free. Even if you don't think you have anything on your credit and you're like, mm-hmm. huh, I, I don't really know what's going on with my credit. Go, go online, pull that credit report, just check it out just so you're in the know about everything. And that way, if it does come time for you to buy a car, get, get a house, rent an apartment, you're not caught off guard by these, these phantom uh, marks on your credit that may pop up. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Ryan, for taking your time. And thank you, Angel, for dropping so much knowledge uh, about credit repair scams and what uh, consumers can actually do and what these companies are actually allowed to do for you. So thank you too for your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to Law and Caution, protection through legal education. Links to helpful resources can be found in the description. Have a great day.